Jim here, AKA Whiskey Philosopher. This is an edition of the Whiskey Philosopher Eats. What I've got to show you here is my first dry aging experiment. It was a block of tenderloin, which a block of tenderloin actually is filet mignon, like a, a big strip of filet mignon. This video is going to start, it's kind of a Tarantino. It starts with the tasting and the results. So first there's a comparison of non-aged to aged. And then it shows what I was going to do, the seasoning and the searing. And then it goes through the dry aging preparation, unpacking, and carving up the uh, the skin, the rind off the aged beef. So if, if you want to see just the beginning, you can see the results. But if you want to watch the whole thing, I think it's something like 20 minutes, you can see an example of my first dry age experience and some of the things I learned along the way. Anyway, stay tuned. You can try the fresh first. Yeah. Let's see. There we go. That was good by itself. Yeah. Mm. Any flavoring on there? Salt or anything? Uh, just salt. Just by itself. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Right. Dry age? Dry age. Let's see. Wow. That's way meatier for sure. Meatier flavor? Mm. Right condensed. How about the tenderness? How would you compare? Okay, so I'd say this is juicier, mm. and this is less juice, but it's not like, it's not dry. Since, like, the meat is so condensed, it's just very smooth. Super meaty flavor. Oh, yeah. Really good. It's really good. Yeah, you prefer oh, yeah. it? Mm. Definitely yeah. prefer dry age, for sure. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. All right. Thank you. What's your summary on the, the dry um, age? I think dry age was better than a regular filet mignon, for sure. It's, it gives a, a different perspective of meat, in a way. Um, it was like a little more s smooth, mm. like creamy, I'd She's say. Gonna that down. She's going to yeah. knock that down. Oh. Yeah, it was kind of creamy and uh, meaty in a good way, for mm. sure. Mm. It was good. And all the flavor of meat that you need is just salt, actually. Salt was best. It was the best, better than most probably your horseradish. It mm. was good. Yeah, it yeah. was very creamy, wasn't it? Somehow. It was very creamy, nutty. Yeah. yeah smooth. It was way better. It just feels Nutty, good on your tongue. Uh, yeah. It was a good feeling. Right. Or a nice touch. It's bizarre because the other, the fresh cooked was really good too. It was right? great, juicy too, different, but. Different flavor. Yeah, the dry age was so different that I think I might prefer the dry age. Cool. Than the regular one. Yeah, right, mate. Thank you. Yep. Cheers. Alrighty, what I've got here now is I have over here the dry aged, and this was also dry aged, 45 days. However, this one, the bag leaked. So. Uh, it looks different from this one. This is really intense. And then these, look at how different these are. These are the fresh, the fresh tenderloin. This is all tenderloin, so essentially filet mignon. And we're going to sear it, and then we're going to see what they taste like comparatively. This is the block of meat before aging and the dry aging bags shown. And this is once I had them sealed into those special dry aging bags, and this is right before I put it into the fridge. Okay, we're here at the unpackaging of the dry aging experiment. I have pictures only of putting the in the dry aging bags, and I'll have to take those out, but these were some bags that were purchased off, I think Facebook is where I saw them actually. So what the plan is today is to open this up, cut it into steaks, uh, reseal it into small bags, and re uh, refreeze it with pepper and garlic only. Usually I would put the salt as well, but what I've heard is maybe, since it's already dried out, maybe I don't want to dry it out more with salt. This is the, <clears throat> the second piece. This was an enormous piece of meat. I don't remember. It was like four kilos in the beginning. I don't know, 12 pounds or something like that. And this one got really, really thin and small, as the whole thing did. And I didn't take a before and after measurement, so I don't know how much it's weighing here. But uh, these are going to be some, some small steaks. Anyway, okay, let me open up this uh, large one here. I don't really have a proper knife for that. It is, it is what it is. There we go. First cut uh, the rind. Table's very shaky. All 
right, here we go. Making steaks. I wish I had a longer knife. This is pretty, uh, pretty naff, but it is what it is. And there we are. So that's uh, 45 days aged beef, and this is, I think, tenderloin. So what I might do is uh, cut the, the rind now. Smells wonderful, actually. Really nice. And I've heard one of the reasons why dry-aged beef is so expensive is because you're wasting a lot of it when you're trimming the rind like this. So I can certainly understand that. This steak was, this steak, this block of meat was uh, what they call dry age spec, which is supposed to mean that it has a lot of waste built into it so that you're, when you cut this, you're not cutting something that would be normally valuable, right? Um, and I, I did have some mixed uh, feedback on whether to cut this fat off or not that cooking with that fat might be something to do. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do both both ways. I'm gonna holy cow this fat is so so easy to cut. That's incredible. Alrighty. <laughs> this is really that's a really small stick. It's starting to look like a filet mignon, I think. Look at look at how, <laughs> how tiny that is. Okay. Um, Alright, so that's what I'm gonna do here. So one at a time, and I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm going to do with this rind meat. I think people just throw it away, but I have heard that people, some people like will trim off as much as they can. And for example, the guy on Google Foods, he made uh, burgers out of it on his channel, and that, that's an interesting idea. Okay, I will continue. I'm gonna keep these pretty nice and thick because those are pretty small. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow, incredible. Okay. All right, the process continues. Here's the second piece. Now the second piece is really thin. And you know, the whole thing kind of flattened out. And I was kind of wondering, you know what? Uh, honestly speaking, when I saw how flat this was at the end and it got all round, probably I shouldn't have dry aged this part. I should have used like this part and just cooked it because now I know that when this dry ages, I mean, it's just gonna thin out. I mean, and become, once you trim, off of there, good grief, I don't know if I'll have anything left <laughs> to steak. Uh, yeah, so you live, you learn. Learned on that one. Put my steaks over here. These are looking beautiful, of course. Uh, this one is, is much harder to the touch, which makes sense because it's smaller, so it's more, it's more rind. as the other one, except a little bit more intense, and the color on this is really intense. Probably it must have had more chance to have whatever kind of reaction was going on, because it's thinner. That might, maybe the drying process was more intense, or if there's any chemical reaction that happens, wow, that is gorgeous. Is gorgeous. All right. Let me take out 
here. That's gonna be hard. Oh wow, I can just, oh. Holy cow, okay. Now that looks like something that could be saved. Once I taste this meat, it'll be like, well, I want to save every little piece. I hope, I hope, I hope it's going to be like that. Yeah, that looks, that looks keepish. Right. And this meat looks a lot like salami as it comes off. Okay, bam, I've got uh, all this, and now moving on to phase two. Alrighty, what I'm gonna do, I've heard that storing it or freezing it with, with spice is okay. However, there's some question about whether you'd wanna store it with salt or not because it's already been kind of dried out and salt would be drying it. So what I'm going to do is I'll add the salt later. So I'll do pepper, cracked pepper, and some nice garlic. I will leave the salt until cooking, cooking time. Alrighty, so let me grab these. And actually I'll spice them all up at the same time, why not? All right, let's get on it. Get some, some garlic powder here. Mm, that smells nice. Not too much because I want to. I want the the taste of that meat in there. I want to overpower it with this garlic. Normally, I really, really like the garlic in there, and I'm gonna go a little bit lighter than I normally do, so as not to overpower whatever natural meaty flavor we're gonna have here. smell though, holy cow. Fantastic smell. So probably I can...
All right. Okay. Let's vacuum these bad boys up. This is a really nice little vacuum machine. I have an expensive one that's all powerful and super good. And then now I just carry this one because it's so much more portable. I got it off AliExpress. I'll put the link inside. It's definitely worth it. I think it was like 20 bucks, maybe 25 bucks. I don't know. All right. So let's see. I've got these. I get this in bulk here in Japan. Kitchen Boss. Yeah, my first, my first vacuum sealer had a cutter on it, and I thought that was a great idea, but actually it turned out to be very awkward because I have to take the roll out, put it in there, and then I found out the Kitchen Boss comes with the cutter. I don't need it. Don't need it. Just, I mean, I don't need it on the, on the vacuum thingy, and many of the vacuum sealers don't have it, and then yeah, it was just a much better deal to, to get it without. Alrighty, pop this down. This one's just a seal one, right? There we go. And unhit that, pop that, all right. Got my thing here. $25, $25, that is, that's very nice. My other one was, I don't know, <laughs> I think it was almost $100, I don't remember. I got it in the States too, I think I had it shipped here. But, all right, let's maybe two or three of these at a time. Yeah, so this, this little unit I use for travel. Um, so very often, not, not very often, but sometimes I'll do <clears throat> sous, -vide, sous vide events on the road and I've got my cooler and I've got this fits inside the cooler nice. Of course, as you know, a sous vide is very easy to, uh, to travel with. So this, this is my traveling rig. So I highly recommend this one. All right, let's have a look. Good grief, not a lot to show. <laughs> 45 days, 130, 140 bucks worth of meat, 45 days. A lot of, uh, a lot of spare trimmed meat over there, but this is what it is. Let's uh, see you at the next stage. Good grief, so here's the fat and the waste meat. I'm wondering what the heck am I gonna do with this? I, I feel bad just throwing it away. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save some of this fat for cooking, perhaps. It's, I know it's not Wagyu, but maybe maybe it's good enough. So I'll save some of that, I'll vacuum it, and then I guess, I mean, I don't know, I don't think I can really find any trimmings out of here. I guess it's all gonna get thrown away, what a shame. Alrighty. All right, one of the things that's left is some 
fat here and I have sometimes with a steak like some wagyu fat will come with it and I've seen how that wagyu fat just melts on the pan so I'm gonna try with this fat and see how it does maybe if it doesn't liquefy I won't, I won't use it anymore I'll give it a try though it's super super soft right now and it has this amazing smell just amazing so I'll give it a try all right so as the epilogue um, it was definitely worth doing I, I there's a lot of waste so I'm feeling a little bit, oh man, uh, probably the, the cut of meat maybe. I should have I should have taken off the part that, that was going to have a lot of waste when it dried out. So that, that was a poor um, meat preparation that I know for the future. Like something like a nice big ribeye block would probably have less waste just because of that. So that whole section in the back that had a lot of the, the tail, I'll call it. So that was, I should have just cooked that normally. And uh, so other than that, that maybe had a lot of waste. And now when I cook these up, I will know whether it was all worth it or not. I hope it was. Uh, if I did it next time, it would definitely be with a ribeye block. Okay, stay tuned, let's see how it goes.